It's Wednesday, August 5th, 2020, and uh, I've been driving for about 20 minutes from the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum in Wapakoneta, Ohio, and I'm on uh, Ohio Highway 274, heading into the town of New Bremen, Ohio home to the Bicycle Museum of America. I've been here briefly once before. I'm going to take a little bit more time today to see it more thoroughly. This has got to be one of the preeminent collections of bicycles in the country, if not the collection. I'm not aware of any better ones. It's in a small town, of course, um, but it's not exactly out of the way. It is just a few miles off of the interstate, north of Dayton, so fairly accessible. It's uh, about 12.15, and uh, the museum only opened at 12 noon. For really the first time on my museum trip of southern Michigan and Ohio, I have a nice day today. Otherwise, it's been overcast and often rainy. In one quarter mile, arrive at 7 West Monroe Street on the left. The Bicycle Museum is in a former, I think, a store or a small department store or something right in the downtown block of New Bremen. Here's the Bicycle Museum of America. Turn right on Northwater Street, then take the first right. Right here. Parking on the street, no meters. By the way, here's a map of northern Ohio with Toledo up here and Lima or Lima here, Troy down here, and the greater Dayton area just down below the bottom of this map. Here's Wapakoneta up here where the Neil Armstrong Museum is. And then down here, by Kettlersville and West, is New Bremen, where the Bicycle Museum of America is. So, pretty much in the same general area as Dayton, perhaps a half an hour drive north of Dayton area. It's interesting that uh, a Google search said this was 7 West and the sign says 17 West, so I think there may be some online information that leaves off the one. The actual museum is not down where the sign is. The actual museum is over here at the other end of the block and there's no signage at all until you get right in front of it. In 
1898 Signet. 1895 Stoddard Tempest. I think that's supposed to be the same thing up there. 19, 1897 Tiger and Tigress. Eighteen seventy six Saint Nicholas High Wheel. And this is a eighteen sixty nine monocycle replica. Three Columbia expert. Eighteen ninety two Gendron Pneumatic Number Seven. Eighteen ninety nine Cleveland. Eighteen ninety six Lorenz Safety. 1898 E.C. Stearns Syracuse Tandem. <clears throat> I'm not going to try to identify everyone here. This is a 1897 Elliot Hickory. Eighteen ninety-eight Old Hickory. Nineteen hundred ladies Pierce Arrow. Nineteen ninety-eight Chilean men's and women's. Eighteen ninety-six Bronco style pneumatic safety. I've ridden one of these things. They're awful things to ride. 1898 Williams Fay Boys Bicycle. 1878 Winsicker Tricycle. 1900 Worthington Ferry Governess Tricycle. <clears throat> these were uh, something that the child could ride, pedal and steer themselves, or the handlebar could be pulled forward, and the governess who was taking the child on an outing could then pull them as if they were in a wagon. 1897 Tally Ho Tandem. 1898 Victor. 
tractor shaft drive bicycle. 1896 Gormuli and Jeffrey Rambler Model 20. 1898 Orient Chainless Women's Bicycle. 1897 New Star Safety Women's Bicycle. 1897 Rex Cycle. Had this uh, odd suspension arrangement where the... Uh, <clears throat> there's an extra pivot arm there. And then this pivots. And it goes to the small back wheel which casters so the uh, seat can move up and down. Eighteen ninety four Lu Min Num. says the success of the bicycle meant that any manufacturer with the ability to produce a bicycle got in on the craze. This example was made by a refrigeration company and features pneumatic tires, a wooden mud guard, an ornate chain guard, and the aluminum frame was cast hollow using a single piece. Extremely heavy, yet full of graceful detail. Made by the St. Louis Refrigerator and Wood Gutter Company of St. Louis, Missouri. And this is a uh, 19, I'm sorry, 1895 World Roadster. Eighteen ninety seven Punnett Companion Tandem. This is a side by side bicycle. I have never ridden one of these, but I know some people who have them and they say that the even with a fairly large man and maybe a petite woman riding side by side, it just the balancing just handles itself. It's easier to ride than it looks. And this is a 1899 Rudge Tandem, an 1895 Crypto Bantam, or Bantam, or Bantam, eighteen ninety six The Fowler. That's a eighteen ninety six Schwinn triplet. And eighteen ninety seven Carroll gear to gear. So the drivetrain is done directly with gears. It's an 1899 Knoll spring frame, so the whole frame is springy. An 1896 Ladies Standish. An 1895 Crescent Model Number One. 1897 Waverly. 1910 Ladies Dursley Peterson and 1907 Men's Dursley Peterson. Here's another one of these side by side. 1897 Wolf American Companion Tricycle, but this is a tricycle. This is a 1976 Huffy Star Spangler Bicentennial and a 1976 Schwinn Varsity Bicentennial 10 speed. Nineteen seventy six Huffy Independence. Nineteen 
1993 Zip 2001 Stars and Stripes. Eighteen ninety six Wright Brothers Saint Clair replica. An eighteen ninety hand propelled tricycle. An eighteen fifty J Ward quadricycle. Eighteen sixteen Dryzine, eighteen nineteen American Hobby Horse, eighteen forty Kirkpatrick McMillan Reproduction. 1869 Dexter Velocipede 1875 Shire Bone Shaker 1870 Blue English Transitional High Wheel 1878 Ariel High Wheel this is often considered to be the original high wheel bicycle from James Starley in England 1888 American safety high wheel 1881 American star high wheel these high wheels with the small wheel in the front came along later and were an attempt to make the high wheel safer by reducing or eliminating its propensity for tipping forward suddenly and dropping the rider on his forehead. There was also an Eagle which was very similar except the drive system was different. The uh, Star has a treadle operation where you just pump up and down on the pedals but they don't go around and the Eagle has a simple drive very much like this this is another treadle machine actually but it's an adaptation it's hooked on to a regular set of pedal cranks then there's the kangaroo which is another type of safety even though the bike is smaller it's still intended for adults and through a gear linkage or chain linkage it achieves the equivalent uh, of a much larger front wheel and the riders closer to the ground 1882 Columbia Expert 1885 Victor High Wheel my favorite high wheel bike in my collection is a uh, reproduction of this one 1886 Gormuli and Jeffrey Child's High Wheel. 1890 Regent Rational High Wheel. 1886 J.K. Starley Rover Safety. 1888 Columbia Veloci. 1890, New Era Safety. 1889, Gormuli and Jeffrey C frame hard tired safety. Has that C frame there. 1891, New Male Ladies Cushion Tire. 1890, Ivor Johnson's Men's Hard Tired Safety. 19, or 1891, Elliot Hickory 
Model B. 1890 Barnes White Flyer. This one's kind of cool. It has a ratchet mechanism on the rear wheel. And the chain just wraps around it, but it doesn't go all the way around. And you can see on the right side, the chain is pretty much played out. But on the other side, the chain is wrapped around the hub. And then the pedals go up and down on rails, and the left pedal is high, and the right pedal is low, so you do an alternate action, pumping up and down, and then that ratchets the uh, left and right hubs. I don't think there's anything requiring these to be synchronous, so you could probably pump both of them up and down at the same time if you wanted to. Eighteen ninety Paragon. Eighteen ninety five Victoria Ladies Pneumatic. Eighteen eighty seven Victor Safety Cross Frame. various old machines for drilling holes in rims and putting tires on bikes. This one's for chewing them up. This was a technique that was used but they're pretty much frowned on today. They tend to come loose and cause crashes. This is an 1880 Auto die cycle. A woman could ride these in skirts. And you have your pedal crank arm there. With straps to allow them to be strapped to the feet. The drive is through metal bands instead of chains. But the interesting thing here is there's no specific tiller mechanism. Instead, the tension on the left and right could be tightened or relaxed using these hand grips and gears. Then a little safety bar with a roller in case you tipped backwards. <clears throat> All of these here were made so that women could go out and enjoy cycling at a time when they couldn't go out in public unless they were wearing full skirts. This is an 1885 Coventry Rotary Woman's Tricycle. Again, nothing to block the skirt here, 
but it only has the one wheel for drive on one side and then it's a bicycle type arrangement on the other side with both front and rear steering. Using this tiller handle. And there's a brake lever there. This is an 1888 Columbia tricycle. A little more convenient in many ways, but probably a bit harder to get on and off. The uh, brake here would be operating a light chain wrapping around the handlebar and then going down to a linkage. Another chain around the corners, and finally up to a uh, band brake on the rear hub, and then the uh, chain was on the other side of that, of course. At the, <clears throat> at the top of the stairs on the second floor, we have an 1896 Zimmy pneumatic safety bicycle. An 1886 Humber number no. three racing bicycle, high wheel bicycle, but with drop handlebars, a very narrow rim and narrow tires, front and rear, very light spoking, small lightweight hubs, lightweight cranks, lightweight pedals, made for speed. This is an 1885 H.B. Smith Special Star. This could cost anywhere between $107 and $127, and of course $1885. Very expensive. This is a 1896 Ivor Johnson truss frame bicycle. This is a kind of bicycle that Marshall Major Taylor, a famous bicycle racer, African-American bicycle racer, uh, will have ridden. nineteen ten ray cycle and a set of roller barrels. These things go way back. They're not a modern invention. But you can see it's a direct drive track bike basically. There's no coaster on this. If the bike is rolling you have to be pedaling and with a very large difference it's made for speed. 1904 Tarot men's two-speed, or is it Tarot? This is a 1941 Schwinn Paramount track bike. Basically just a flat, hard tire, not a pneumatic tire. An 18, or I'm sorry, 1982 MIT K speed cycle. Big chain ring on the front going up to an intermediate. Another big chain ring down there. Nineteen forty one Schwinn Light Gear Paramount Latournier Record Replica. 1960 Peugeot 558. 1987 7-Eleven Huffy Sirota. Nineteen eighty six Raleigh Sport. Nineteen 
1986 Schwinn Shadow Prototype Paramount. 2010 Gonzari Van Cleve. And this is a 2009 Delta 7 Erantix. Nineteen ninety seven Waterford, twenty twelve Tortola Round Tail, Custom Seven Alta Racing Bike, nineteen ninety two Zip two thousand one. This is a, uh, the signage is a little confusing here. I think this is the 2007 Master Pista La Carrera Futura 2000. And this is a 1999 Ibis Sazazbo. Probably mangling that name. This is a 1953 Pee Wee Herman's Schwinn DX. All tricked out. This is a Martone Grand Limited Edition and a 1965 Molten Stowaway Folding Bicycle. A 1960 Bowden Space Lander. A 1980 Volvo Itera. A handcrafted and wooden artist bicycle, one of a kind, made by Warren J. Von Boatbill. Botbill. This is a 19, or I'm sorry, 1885 three-wheeled high wheel, one of a kind creation. This is a 1901 Wolf American Ice Bicycle with a skid for the front and spikes for the rear. Nineteen fifty-nine Schwinn Circus Typhoon with wheels set up to roll on a tightrope. This is a 1937 Ingersoll Ingo bike made by the same company that is affiliated with Ingersoll Rand that makes industrial air compressors and so on. This is a bicycle with an eccentric rear wheel. As you can probably see there, it's hard to get an angle, but the hub is eccentric. It's not in the center of the wheel. And the frame there is made out of essentially like leaf springs. And then you have a flexible wooden board for a platform. And by bouncing up and down on there, it flexes the frame and springs back. And if you 
synchronize your bouncing with the rotational speed of the back wheel, you can get motive force from the bouncing. It converts up and down bouncing motion to rolling motion. They actually roll pretty well. There are people in the wheelmen who've done century rides on those. I rode one for a while at a bicycle show in Chicago and at first I thought it was impossible but finally I got the knack and then it actually rode quite nicely. This is a 1985 Super Trick Cycle. So both the front wheel and the seat uh, steer. Kind of like a bicycle, kind of like a unicycle. This is a 1964 Dedem Start Netherland Strano. Probably mispronouncing the name. This is an amphibious bicycle where the rider and the bicycle is underwater except for the buoyancy tanks. And it's uh, has a fin for steering and a propeller for pushing. 1917. And this is a 1937 prototype PETA plane designed to create a more safe bicycle by allowing for full stops by putting one's feet flat on the ground. So you're down really low and pedaling forward almost like a recumbent in many ways. nineteen forty five BSA paratrooper folding bicycle eighteen ninety six Columbia model forty three military tandem bicycle a nineteen oh one Maxim machine gun tandem tricycle eighteen ninety six Columbia model forty military bicycle eighteen ninety Columbia bicycle kitted out for military use two thousand five Wavecrest Tidal Force M seven fifty electric bicycle So there's motor generators on front and rear wheels, and I presume that's a battery unit in the cross brace. This is a 1891 Columbia Light Roadster Safety, again kitted out for military use. The Soldier's Standard Bicycle. 1943 Swiss Army Military Bicycle. And this is a 1944 U.S. Army restored original military bicycle. Complete with military field phone. Oh boy, a lot of bikes here. I think I'm gonna get back from this a little bit more. This is a monocycle uh, made in China. It says here the it's a 2008 Monovelo. It was designed in Switzerland and produced in China, and there are only 30 in existence. This monocycle is a seven-foot one-wheeled novelty vehicle which was utilized in the closing ceremonies in the Beijing Olympics during the 2008 Games. Members of the Chinese military police rode the illuminated monocycles on the internationally televised ceremonies. 
after practicing on them for several months. See how it goes together from a modular assembly. I had a chance to ride on a monocycle that was made by one of the members of the wheelmen. He had a safety bar welded onto the inner ring so he could run along the side to save people from falling completely down once they inevitably fell completely down. <laughs> Just about the time I thought I was starting to get the knack on it, then it was somebody else's turn, so I was never able to ride it completely by myself. Two thousand eight Towney Holiday Three I Electra Bicycle. Just a casual road bike, not electric. Two thousand eight Cannondale Caffeine Twenty Nine ER. Two thousand eight Trek Madone Five Point Two Fifty Eight Onyx Road Bicycle. 2014 Van Hulstein or Van Hulstein twenty fourteen Surly Moonlander twenty fourteen horse cycle KM City Cruiser two thousand seven Bir Biria EB Light 8. 2017 Van Moof Electrified S. 2006 Waldmeister Supernova Wooden Bicycle. And there, just for the heck of it, is a 19th century carriage and a mid century Victory Pedicab. It's a 1950 Hopalong Cassidy child's bicycle, a 1949 Donald Duck bicycle, 1953 Roadmaster Luxury Liner, 1949 J.C. Higgins Color Flow, 1940 Goodyear Double Eagle Clipper Deluxe, 1936 Elgin Bluebeard, 1938 Shelby Airflow Ladies Bicycle, 1937 Streamflow Balloon Tire, 1929 Lindy, named after Charles Lindbergh. 1925 Mead Ranger, 1920 Ivor Johnson Roadster, 1970, 19, I don't get this right yet, 1919 Indian, 1917 The Miami, 1917 to 1922 Harley Davidson Bicycle Collection. 
That's apparently all these green ones. That's a 1936 Dayton. I think that's what it is. No, this is the um, 1949 Huffy convertible. And this, I think, is the 1936 Dayton D34E. That's a 1950 dial ride by Huffman Manufacturing. And this is a 1998 Good Vibrations by Huffy. And a 1978 Huffy Bandit. 1968 Super Stock 3 by Huffy. 1955 Huffy Radio Bike. 1935 Dayton Safety Streamliner. nineteen oh four Dayton Racer nineteen forty Dayton Balloon Tire nineteen sixty nine Super Stock five by Huffy nineteen fifty eight Huffy Fury nineteen thirty four D four balloon tire 1900 Dayton women's bike 1970 Paramount by Schwinn there's a 1900 Davis sewing machine 1962 Corvette 1991 Paramount Series 90 PDG Mountain Bicycle. Cow Bicycle, Cow Tricycle, rather. 1987 Cimarron. And back there is a 1993 Z-Force BMX. And, um... <clears throat> Let's see. This upper one doesn't seem to be... Maybe they're the same thing. 1940s New World Breeze, men's and women's versions. That's what they are. 1955 Black Phantom ladies bike. That's by Schwinn. 1954 Black Phantom B-17 men's bicycle. 1941 World DX by Arnold Schwinn and Company. 19, I'm sorry, 1896 The World Quintuplet Bicycle. 1934 Aero Cycle by Schwinn. 1932 Motorbike. which it says here, after the 1929 stock market crash, Schwinn needed fresh, bold ideas in order to survive. And they focused all resources on making low-cost, cutting-edge bicycles. I never had one of these lemon peelers when I was a kid, but it's the right era. Some of my friends had them. Everybody wanted the lemon peeler. The apple crate wasn't so popular. And I rode theirs a few times. They were kind of fun, but I wouldn't want to go on a long ride on one. <clears throat> then they had the pea picker. That's a 1970. And the 1971 Grey Ghost. And the 1970 Grape Crate. 
and the 1970 cotton picker. And the 1968 orange crate and the 2013 Fritz 50th anniversary crate. And this is some sort of pedicar. See if there's any signage on it. Looks like something you could ride in a parade or something, but I don't see any signage. Okay, there's that room. Just a very quick walk through it. Now they mentioned a third floor, but these are, uh, I don't see any way to go up from here. I seem to recall they had a basement. Maybe that's what they call the third floor. In reverse. A small correction on that. There were these secondary handles, which uh, if you pulled up against a spring did affect a braking action. There are a few things in here which are rather spurious. There's a bicycle bugle here next to a bicycle horn, but they only have one sign. The bottom one's the bicycle horn and the top one is a bicycle bugle. And I noticed that the sign for the St. Nicholas High Wheel was almost entirely wrong in its details. So I pointed that out to the curator. Don't want to bombard the guy with things I find that don't look right. So a bit of a clarification of what I was talking about coming in. The Bicycle Museum of America is at 7 West Monroe. And just at the other end of the very short block is 17 West. Um, and there's a big sign that I showed earlier, the Bicycle Museum of America 17 West, which is in fact a restaurant having the same exact name as the museum, which is confusing. The curator seemed nonplussed by that. But this is the museum at the one end of the block. And the restaurant with the bigger, more easily seen sign is at the other end of the block. So don't be misled.